Hey, so it's been a while, right? So basically what's been going on in the background is I'm setting up the, the foundation for building a studio. And that requires a lot of travel, legal work, documentation, stuff that I'm not necessarily allowed to go public about while it's still in progress. But when it's done, uh, I'll be more than happy to share the news. It's been taking a lot of my time. I've been going venue to venue uh, to try to get some support for this. And you, you might see me in Seattle or San Francisco and stuff like that here and there. But uh, generally speaking, uh, most of what I've been doing lately is, is just laying down that groundwork. Now, on the dev side of things, I've also been very busy with this guy. This is the Gear VR. Uh, it's, it's from Samsung and Oculus. And I've had this for a little while, but most of my work has been going into the finished title Proton Pulse. And, you know, whenever there's an update, I really need a hammer at that because uh, this will be coming out very soon. However, Proton Pulse's d uh, demo is complete. So with the little extra time that I have, I'm going to be working on this. Now, you, you may have recognized this already. This is Vanguard V. And it would be awesome if I could have this on the Gear VR day one. So, I mean, it's not a complete gate, obviously. Otherwise, I wouldn't be advertising it as such. But this is the mobile version. And you'll see that there's like this yellow thing going on here and some blue and, and um, what's going on here is there's some trickery I'm doing to try to get some advanced effects. So this is the planet and I've sliced off the sides. I mean, there's no real reason to have all of that there. And here we can see I would rather zoom in on that, that I have this quad. And this quad just has this basic low resolution texture. But I can change the scale, the color, the look uh, during the game. So this is how I do the sunrise effect. This plus my skybox back here, which you can see has this really white glowy thing going on, um, really adds the background effects. I made the script that allows me to change how this uh, the skybox looks as you play as well. And so uh, while it doesn't look good here, when you're in the camera, you can see how it adds this nice um, atmosphere glow. And so I'm going to go ahead and show you an example of how this quad right here with the colors, this is basically where the sun will be coming up and this skybox affects the game in general. Now the reason why this quad is here before the sun is, is that adds a nice silhouette to oncoming objects. So here you can see a couple of the first asteroids. But let's go ahead and hit play and, and see how this goes. All right, so now we're taking off. And you can see it's just this light haze when you start off. And everything's kind of this deep blue. You get the occasional bounce light from uh, an asteroid. And uh, some of these are uh, animated particle effects. But here, here's the real geometry as we come through. And I'm going to take some damage because I'm not controlling this at the time. But you can see as we progress, this starts to spread and it gets more and more um, yellow to orange. Now, as we get through these rocks, and I've adjusted it a little bit so we don't uh, fly into things just during... I, I start taking out the blue. I add in some more red. And right when the parasites come in is where I really bring in the orange. Now, this is supposed to convey some level of danger and stuff, but it's also a brilliant time to bring in the sun. And so you can see the sun starting to reflect from the bottom. And this is how I'm doing all the atmosphere effects, is just by uh, animating the color and scale of that quad and changing the color of the skybox itself. Now, what's beautiful about that is it's very, very cheap. Um, that quad does have some transparency, so there is some level of uh, expense in that. However, it is also the very last thing that renders, generally. I mean, uh, if I had a lot of overlapping transparencies, that could be a problem. Now, what I'm trying to do, I'm going to go ahead and let this run. What I'm trying to do is to find any little place in here I can to optimize performance. It's running brilliantly on the Gear VR and a lot of Android devices. Um, but there are little areas here and there where it's not so great. And I'd like to smooth those out as best as I can. Let's go ahead and dive in here. Now, the first thing I mentioned uh, early on was that overlapping transparencies can get somewhat expensive. You'll notice that Q's face is no longer reflecting in, uh, reflecting in this version. This is because I've boiled down everything to two cameras. Um, 
And since this is a large transparency in itself, that's one overlap we have to do. Now, the other thing that we're uh, rendering with transparencies are these UI elements. So this is a transparent quad uh, layered on with this transparent quad. And then there's the, and they're turned off right now, there's the uh, tilt sensors and stuff like that. And so that's a few layers in. Now there's a number of ways we can get around that. So first and foremost, we can go in here and actually, in some cases, this is better, um, model this out with actual geometry because that, believe it or not, is cheaper than rendering overlapping transparencies in many cases. However, with all of these curves and all of these bits, that would take um, a fair amount of polys to get that level of detail. So what we would want to do is simplify it to something that's a little more angled um, and stylized to prevent uh, excessive UI poly stuff. Here's the other thing that I'm rendering is this. This guy tilts with you and this one stays solid and what th these curves up here do is they give you this frame of reference on where um, the tilt is. So it will never tilt uh, it also acts as the end point for the, the the shot timer. So there's this red ring, and when it meets the green ring, that's when your timed shots go out. Bete between when it um, starts and when it ends, you have enough time. You may have enough time to go and target something else, so you can go up to six things and blow them all up at once instead of just one thing at a time. Now, this particular mechanic where it's an automated shooting thing will be upgraded as you play, so you'll be able to upgrade the timing of it or how many things you can lock on at once, uh, how fast your rate of fire is, your reload speed, all of that stuff. But for the demo, it's just set to a default level, and um, that's how it's going to stay for a little while until I can get into the next levels. Now, we are very, very close to moving on to the boss level, to level two. Some of that pre-production work is uh, behind me on this wall over here. And uh, once this is done and once I update the demos for the DK2 on Mac and uh, Windows to the latest SDK, I'm moving on because ultimately we could be polishing this level for years. But it takes, um, it, it, it's, it's, it's time to move on because ultimately, and th this is true with every single game shift, no game shift is finished. Every game designer wants to just keep working on it, but there's a point where you have to cut it off and keep going. And what's really good is we have level one at a playable state. I'm going to call it a demo prototype, whatever you want to call it. But as we progress, technologies will get better. We'll have Unity 5, physically based renders and such. And all of that can be rolled back into level one. So what you see here may represent what Vanguard V plays like, but it's only going to get better from here. So it's it's best not to waste too much time on any one area and keep moving forward so you can develop those technologies and see where you really need to put the polish and time and effort.